I studied the statist statistics here at the University of Valladolid many, many years ago. So it's a pleasure to be here. And after that, I, I began to, to work uh, in the Institute of Pharmacopidemiology here in Valladolid as well. And I, I collaborated with the Autonomous University in Barcelona, um, in Edinburgh, with the, the Alcohol Research Group, a very funny, a very funny group. Um, and after that, I, I came to Madrid uh, to study um, uh, statistical sciences. And after that, a PhD study in, in mathematical engineering. Um, more or less 15 years ago, I, I went to, to the computer science school in order to, to work with computer scientists instead of being working with mathematical people, mathematics and statistics, okay? So this is more or less my, my background. And at the end of, of all of this, I am the coordinator of the data science laboratory which is a multidisciplinary and research or multidisciplinary and international group of researchers, teachers from different areas, different domains and different universities. Okay. We have uh, statisticians, of course, we have mathematical mathematics, we have computer science, uh, software engineering, telecommunication engineering, industrial engineering, etc. Okay, we are actually we are more or less 25 persons with students, PhD students, etc. Um, we focus on the foundations and applications of data science. This is the topic, the big idea, okay? Foundations, that is the, the theory behind data science, and applications, so the practice. Um, these are our main uh, points, the education and training of the students, okay? We have, for instance, we have a master in data science, we have, we have several MOOCs. Um, we have a, a teaching innovation group as well. This teaching innovation is related to not only how to explain or how to teach data science, but how to use data science in order to improve your teaching. For instance, uh, by detecting influencers in your, in your, between your students or outliers. I don't know, good and bad students, okay? Using data science. And well, we have uh, these research and innovation projects, okay, especially funded by, I don't know, funded by governments, uh, uh, Euro, European governments or, or, or even private companies. Um, consulting and strategic assessment for companies, okay? Trying to, to, to develop this idea of data-driven companies. We have many, many projects with different companies in different domains. Uh, here, I, uh, today, I'm going to show you some of these projects, okay? Well, more or less, this is the structure of the group. As you can see, we have optimization maths, uh, statistics, machine learning, software engineering, software engineering quality, information systems, etc. So, probably you know this, these two figures, especially the theory, the foundations uh, figure, okay? So just to some words about this, this, this figure here. As you can see, the, the machine learning or, the, or the, the fusion, the combination of statistics and mathematics and computer science or hacking skills uh, means machine learning. It's okay, okay? But machine learning is not the end of the history. Um, machine learning does nothing to do with scientific uh, domain. You need this scientific domain in order to, to, to be a data scientist or to make data science. You need this substantive expertise, okay? If you don't have this scientific domain, I mean, you, you are just, or you are making just machine learning. And that's not all, okay? If you want to be here, you need this, these problems, okay? This, this business uh, problem. Um, and this is how we define uh, our, uh, our data science life cycle, okay? Um, we, we like to, to say that this is, or we like to, to know this figure as learning around data. 
So the data is not the beginning of the problem. That's the, one of the key points. The problem does not begin with the data. The problem begin usually here in the business. Okay, so you need this expertise here probably to define the problem, okay? And to define the hypothesis, okay? Then when you, when you understand that, I, I would like to say that this is the coffee time, the meeting time, because <laughs> there are a lot of coffees, a lot of meeting with the company in order to, 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 to speak the same language, okay? Because we have the, probably the, the, the theoretical, mathematical language, but we need the, to understand the business language and they need to understand us. Okay, so after that, after this first first step, we collect data. Okay, yeah, using probably hacking skills as to collect the data, to collect the data, to manage the data, to clean the data, etc. Well, cleaning data is more here. No, it's more in data preparation. This is quite related to computer science skills and quite related to statisticians. Okay, many people say that um, this step here means more or less the 80% of the, of the time, 90% of the time of, of all the project, okay? It's so, so a lot of time that you are here, preparing your data, uh, I don't know, making imputation of data, uh, um, extracting insights, extracting features, uh, using statistical methods usually, okay? But after that, you, you need to model, to, to model the problem using machine learning models in general. Okay, um, many computer scientists think that this data preparation is not necessary. Why? Because they know and they understand deep learning. And they think, well, this deep learning, deep learning, roughly speaking, is the solution of everything. No, you don't need to prepare your data. You don't need to, I don't know, multidimensional scaling. You don't need to extract which are the uh, outlier detection. You don't need that because deep learning is the solution. It's an error. Of course, it's an error. Okay, so after the modeling, after using the best model, uh, a number of models, a battery of models, you need to evaluate the models. And once again, many people think that this is quite easy. It's just the, the error, the error to evaluate the model, but it's not the end of the history. You need to define which metric do you need to evaluate your model at your problem? And sometimes it's easy, but many, many times it depends on the problem and the domain. Okay, you have a number of metrics, the error, the accuracy, uh, balance accuracy, precision, recall, F, F measure, and, and many others, okay? We are working, for instance, with a student here in defining new um, evaluation metrics, okay? After that, another crucial step, the visualization, the explanation, the storytelling, just to, to transmit and to transform your mathematical knowledge into business knowledge. Okay, you have to, to show your results and to, to, the, to the business, no? To translate your results into understandable and using usually explainable methods. Okay, so nowadays it's very top, it's very high to um, talk about explainability. Okay, explainability machine learning, explainability artificial intelligence, etc. And we are working as well on this uh, area, um, on, met on methods and techniques of explainability. Okay, and after that, just the deployment. What is the deployment? Well, to, to build perhaps a dashboard or a APP or whatever, or yeah, mobile applications in order to use the model into the company, to, to the model uh, uh, in order to begin the, to solve the problem, okay? But once again, this is not the end, okay? This is not the end because many times using the model implies to change the distribution of the new data. Okay, this is very common in our world. Okay, when the model begin, begins to work, it means a change in the, on the distribution of the new data. It's, it is called more or less concept drift. It's related to concept drift. Okay, to change the, the 
the original situation. And so this is the new first, the, sorry, this is a cycle, a cycle with different rounds, usually. So using this idea, this methodology, we have performed many, many projects with different companies. I have here a, a list of different projects with different companies, and I want you to show some of them. I have another presentation here. Let me show. A ver si se ve bien. Ahí no se va a ver bien, pero no problema. La hago así. Sorry. Okay, so um, we have used data science with, with the company Ericsson, okay, applied to 5G. In this case, we, we develop a method, okay, a framework, um, an automated system to detect uh, degradation in, on, on video, of video streaming, okay? So the interesting thing here is that they, pro they provide us with uh, 300,000 uh, level eight traces. But the, the label here, I mean, uh, we didn't have many confidence on the labels. So if you have a look to the problem, you, you, you can say, okay, it's a supervised learning, or supervised problem, okay? So you, you need to use, I don't know, many, one of the many supervised machine learning techniques. But in this case, we, we use an, a supervised, le and supervised learning clustering techniques because we, we didn't have many confidence on these labels here. So at the end, we cluster, we, we build several groups and we study the label on these groups, okay? In order to, to build this, this framework here. It's only an example, okay? So in the, another, another application, another history, data science for the health domain. Well, we, we have collaborated with different groups, different companies here. For, for example, El Instituto de Investigación Biomédica de Salamanca, or I don't know, the hospital, uh, university, university Hospital Foundation Alcorcón in Madrid, okay? For instance, with Salamanca, we have developed this, um, this method here to evaluate the reputation of websites um, medical domain, okay, in order to to evaluate this reputation and, and related to some topics of, of health, health domain. In this case, we have used many big, big, uh, big data architectures, many data science techniques, and in this case, we, we, we have used deep learning, for instance. Um, in this case here, working with the national hip fracture um, network, we have information about uh, hip fracture uh, in Spain. Um, we tried to develop a, predict a predictive model of the ability of walking one month uh, after suffering a hip fracture, okay? Um, in this case, the, the interesting thing is that the, the doctors need an explainable model, okay? They don't like anything related to deep learning or black boxes models. So in this case, we perform it uh, um, logistic regression uh, multinomial logistic regression in order to create this this model, but um, they, they like very much this explainable explainability based on examples. For instance, counterfactuals. I don't know if you know what a counterfactual is, but counterfactuals in, to, to define a counterfactual is something related to. I have a prediction for an observation. Uh, I need to know which changes are needed on this observation in order to get another prediction, a different prediction for this observation. I quite, it, it is quite interesting for, for doctors because they have a prediction for a patient, but they, they, are, they are asking, okay, but what to do to change this prediction? What to do to improve this, this a probability of recovery, the ability of walking, okay? What else? Well, we have some data science um, for people with intellectual disabilities, working with the Vodafone Spain Foundation. And in this case, we, the, the only thing we, we did for them was a dashboard. I mean, they have a, a huge database and they need 
a tool, an easy tool to extract as much information as possible from this from this data database. And we built some kind of dashboard to visualize the performance of, of, of the different association using one of the of the tools for these disability disability people. In the field of uh, chemical engineering, we have been working with, with Repsol. Okay, and in this case, the, the, the machine learning technique you want is this, the implementation of, of new methodology for selection of variables in high dimensional problems. Okay, an advanced machine learning model um, combining this, this idea of explainability, always uh, to build um, an explainable model, okay, with precision, of course. Uh, what else? Well, for the livestock domain, data science for the livestock domain. In this case, we work with a company called uh, Sensor Wave, building uh, those devices there. It's uh, this device here. I don't know if it's this this one here, the green one. It's a device um, collecting information about the movement of the animal. Okay, in this case, a cow. Um, uh, it's a GPS as well, so we have information about the movement and the and and as an as, as accelerometer. Okay, there. So we have this all this information, and we are able to answer some domain questions relative importance. For instance, Calvin detection. Okay, in this case, the model we have developed, which is based more or less in outlier detection, because as you can th think, uh, when a Cow when an animal, um, uh, that I mean the behavior of the animal is different in this situation, in this Calvin situation, and in this case, eight out of uh, ten Calvins are detected. As well, we are able to predict the day of heat for the animals, and another quite interesting project is is this GLOB here. Um, it's a project to, to detect, not, not to detect, but to prevent and to, to, to early detect wolf attacks. Okay? The, behavior of, the behavior of the animal is completely different when, when an attack, a wolf attack appears. So using this analysis of light data, we are able to, to say, okay, probably your, your cattle is uh, involved in a wolf attack. Okay. Um, Okay. So some other ideas about sentiment analysis. We have developed this visual framework for dynamic and emotional web analysis using natural language processing techniques and visualization techniques. Okay, in order to show um, the way uh, or, or the, the relationship between different concepts and the sentiment related to these concepts in different uh, instances of time. For computer vision, we have many projects related to um, surveillance, okay? So we have developed this intelligent video surveillance system. Um, this system is able to detect different situations. For instance, I don't know, a, a, a restricted area to, to be in a restricted area or abandoned objects, etc. We have some other projects in retail, but I think, no, Victor well, is going to, to explain you some projects uh, on the tourist domain. Okay. Um, to finish, we have this uh, communication project, if you want this uh, teaching innovation or transfer project, society tra transfer to the society project, which is the data science game. Okay, at the end of the day, we are gamers, but we are we like board board games. Okay, so we have developed with the with the help of the Jount Academy of Spain, we have developed um, a board game relate uh, for kids and for adults about data science. So th through the game, we are we try to to communicate. Some, some ideas, some technologies, some methods related to, to mathematics, to statistics, computer science, I don't know. Um, and well, we, we are developing this, this uh, and, and looking for funding for, to, to, to commercialize this, this game, this game here. Okay, I think 
that's all for me. Um, now, Victor is going to explain you one of our our success story in the on the Tuesday domain. I don't know if you have some question for me or. Thank you. Hello, yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, you have present uh, very nice applications. Um, how about data, how you deal with uh, the data that came from different uh, enterprise regarding to data protection? And can you give us some, I mean, uh, for many of these applications, we have to train models. So we, we must get the data, and some of them is transformed from the health system, so they are sensitive data. So, uh, how you deal with with this kind of data? Have you access to, to it, or no. well, in general, sorry. in general, this all I think all these projects are are in, in common with with different partners. And these partners are in the on the domain in the domain into the domain. These companies or these hospitals provide us the, the data. So for us, as I said at the beginning of the of the talk, the the problem be, begins um, in the company in the I don't know in the hospital. So the hospital calls us and says, "Okay, I have the data. I have this problem. I would like to to exploit this data." Uh, to, to study if the if it is possible to answer these questions and many times we say well no <laughs> with this kind of data it's not possible to answer these questions but let, let's go to 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 study which kind of data do you have and perhaps there is a question there related to your, your domain and your data are able to answer this question but Usually, it's not a problem for us because the, the problem is in the company. Another 